So in the past videos, we built out our vacation request form, we created some relationships, and now we really need to visualize all the data that exists within this application already. In order to do that, we're gonna go and click on access this application, and we're gonna work with this employees report that automatically was created whenever we imported that data in. Now, by default, this list report gets created every single time a form is built. And a list report is probably the most commonly used report that people will interact with, but there's a lot of power here on this single page. And so first and foremost, um, we can you know select a bunch of records and make modifications to them. If we want to edit all of the records and select a column or a field to edit and say all of them should have 20 vacation days available and everything will get updated and all at once all those numbers get changed to 20. Now I can also group these and so maybe I probably want to group these based on what branch they're in. So I can click on the down arrow and you can see there's a couple options here. I'll just simply group by ascending and so here you can see it's got the name of the branch that they work at and all the employees within it. And now within that grouping I probably want to sort it alphabetically as well based on all the employees. So I can click on the name field, click on that drop down and sort by ascending. So now it'll sort it by name field. So I like this grouping that I've got based on the branch and based on the name. And if I hover over the name of the report, I can click on save changes. Now when I click on save changes, I have two options. I can either save the settings to this existing report, or I can keep create a brand new duplicate report based on the modifications that I've done. In this case, I want to save it to the current report. So I'll go ahead and click save. And now those settings are default. Every time this report loads, if I go over to offices and come back to employees, it will show me all of the employees grouped based on their branch and then also alphabetical based on their name. A couple other tweaks we can probably do here. First of all, searching. Oftentimes you're gonna have a lot of information in these reports. You need to be able to find exactly what you need. So you can search based on any field in that report. And so here, if I wanna search based on name and find Oscar, I can say Oscar and it'll show up Oscar right there, right? So a very simple search functionality. You can make multiple search queries. If I want to say Oscar from a certain branch who has less than you know 10 days available, I can select all these and make it work that way. Now, also, if I click on these three arrows in the top right corner, you can see show as, and there's a couple different options here. So I can convert this list report into a spreadsheet view. So a spreadsheet view makes it very easy to modify a bunch of information all at once. So let's say, for example, vacation days available, I can just double click on this and say 30, for example. I can even hover over that small bottom right corner, just like in Excel, and drag and drop, and all of those will get updated. And you can see the yellow is highlighted for updates, and the white one backgrounds are things that haven't changed yet. If I like the changes, I can click on this save icon and run it back that way. Now, you could also make changes to drop downs, do whatever, but it's a really good way to make bulk changes to a lot of things at once using this spreadsheet report. Now I can go ahead and remove the changes and go back into my default list report. There's also a Kanban report. It's not really that valuable in this kind of a scenario. Generally, a Kanban report is going to be something a lot more along the lines of like statuses. And so maybe in that vacation request form, we had a maybe a status field created for pending, approved, or rejected. I might create a Kanban view for that. So in this case, I'm not going to get into it, but maybe we'll do it in a future video. So I'll just go ahead and X out of this. And then also you can import additional data into this employee form if you want to create prints and then export it as well into a bunch of different formats. So by default, those are just kind of like the very easy tweaks you're going to do when you're kind of interacting with reports that exist already. And now there's two main ways to kind of customize this. So what we're looking at right now is what we call the quick view because you can quickly view a bunch of things at once. When I click on a record, this is what takes us to a detail view where we see, now as you can imagine, the details of a record. Now we wanna be able to customize what this detail view looks like, as well as maybe the pieces of information that are displayed in this quick view. So in order to do that, we're gonna go over to edit this application and we're going to be at our all employees report. And here, when I hover over the middle, I have two options, configuring the field and open report properties. First, let's dig into report properties. And here you can see that the first thing I have the option to do is create a filter. If I wanted to add a filter, maybe people that have a certain name, maybe people who have a certain role, people who have vacation days that are available or not from a certain branch, I can make a filter based on that. And it would only show me records that match that criteria. In this case, I want all the employees to show up, so I won't add a filter. 
But if I click on grouping, we'll see that the branch grouping is automatically already there from what we saved in the previous screens. And so that is saved as sorting, ascending, all good to go, as well as the name field is sorted ascendingly, right? And we can sort it based on first name or last name um, and then pick ascending or descending. There's also quick filters. And so quick filters are super helpful. I'll make a quick one on roles and I'll show you how that kind of works. So now this quick filter exists and actually while we're at it, let's just make another one and we'll do one based on the branches as well. And if I click done and access this application, now I've got this little filter icon that pops up on the right that wasn't there before. And here you can see I've got roles and branches. If I click on roles, I can only see salespeople. And now I only see people in the sales role. If I click on branch and maybe look at people from Austin, there's nobody in sales and in Austin. So if I remove that sales filter, now I get Alvin who's in our Austin office, right? So these filters are an easy way if you know pre-configured ways of um, filtering your data down, those quick filters are super helpful. So if I come back over and go back to report properties, quick filters are automatically created, like I said, based on a field that exists. Custom filters can be a little bit smarter. So you can make a custom filter that has a bunch of different criteria in it and combine them with and or or kind of statements. So if we want someone who is from sales equals sales or let's say role equals maybe regional manager, right? So it'll show me salespeople and regional managers and then I can give it a name for it. So this is just more of a customizable quick filter if you look at it that way. I won't really make any of these. The last one, printing in PDF, this is to kind of create a template in order to print something. Maybe you want like a certificate or some sort of um, invoice that gets generated. Those are all like print templates that get created. We're not gonna go into this right now because um, it's a little bit outside of the scope here. So back to the actual list report, we went through the properties and now on the right hand side, we see two options, quick view, like I mentioned before, and detail view, which is this right hand side of the box that I mentioned as well. So first thing we want to do is customize the quick view. And you can see here, there's a couple different options. This is the standard, which is basically just a bunch of rows, as you can imagine. And there's a couple card layouts you can do as well. If I add a card, you'll see it kind of creates a card and you can show certain pieces of information. In this case, since we have a lot of details going on at once, I really want to stick with this um, list view. And I can see that these are all the fields that are going to be displayed. If I want to add additional fields, I can by scrolling down. And you'll see here that the related fields, like the branch they work at and the office, or sorry, the department they're at, I can pull in any field of information from there. So if I want to bring in the branch website, for example, I can do so there and it'll be displayed. Now also I can have a couple different things. You'll see here, some of them have an, a little icon on the right hand side showing that it's related from a different field. And I also, if I don't have address line two, I don't have country, I can get rid of those. Um, I can change it to coordinates if I want to. A bunch of customization options in here. You kind of just point and click and figure it out. Another thing that can happen is stylizing these things. And so if I want to stylize employees, I can pick kind of one of these templates or create a custom one. But let's say I want to make somebody red and why do I want someone to show up red? Well, I want them to show up red if their vacation days available equals zero. So once they've maxed out their vacation days, that's what I want to have happen here. And we'll say no more vacation days and click save. So now the address field here alone is going to be marked as red whenever it doesn't have any vacation days available for that employee. In this case, I probably want to also highlight their name so I can figure it for that as well. I can select the one I just created and so I don't have to recreate it and click save. And let me X out of here. Let's ask, access this application and see how it kind of works. So right now everybody has a white background because if I scroll over, um, or actually I don't even see the days off they have. So let me edit this application and add those columns in there. So we will click on here, add fields, vacation days taken, and vacation days available. I'm actually going to get rid of this website because it's just taking up space here. And click on X and access this application. All right, so now we get vacation days taken, vacation days available. Now, if I go in here and let's make a change to everybody in Albany, for example, we'll edit the records and we'll say that vacation days available is zero. 
you'll see here that the name got marked as red. Now the address field didn't because I don't have the address field showing here anymore. I got rid of it. And so whatever fields I want to mark as red, I can do so. And if I come in here and click on a record and maybe make a change to it and say they now have 20 vacation days available, it'll become unread. So those kind of conditional formatting is just based on any kind of criteria you set. We can highlight or change the look and feel of any column or the whole row as if we wanted to as well. So that's kind of a lot of the kind of visual aspects of the quick view. Now we need to get into the detail view. So the detail view is going to be what happens when we actually click on a record. And so here by default, if I click on this, it'll show me all of the columns available or basically every piece of information about that record. And if I click on the second one down here, what happens is I can create what's called blocks. And so each one of these blocks or sections will show some piece of information. So first we have the overview, which is all of the records about that employee itself. And if I scroll down a little bit further, I've got a couple what we call related blocks. And so these blocks are being pulled from relationships that the employee is employee record has. For example, it's related to a department and it's related to a branch. Department, since it only has one field, such as department name, I don't really care for it. So I can just click on that one, click on the trash can and get rid of it. The branch information, kind of nice to have at the bottom of an employee. So I'll leave that there. But I also want to add a related block. In this related block, I want to display all of the vacation requests that this employee has submitted. So I'll go ahead and select vacation requests, create a block. And in this block, it's going to be employee, vacation date, vacation end date, and time off. I don't need to see the employee's name again because I already know it's related to them. So I'll get rid of that field so it doesn't show up out of place. And if everything else looks pretty solid, I will go ahead and click on the X here, access this application. And we made some vacation requests for Creed. So I'll click on Creed's name here. And here you can see it looks a little bit different now. I've got an overview section that shows me the information about Creed. I've got his branch information, as well as a list of all the vacation requests that he has made. If I want to add additional vacation requests, I can click on this plus icon. It'll automatically pop up a little form, pre-populate Creed's name for me, and say he's also requesting, let's say, the first week of November off. And so that's five days. I'll click submit. And now you can see here that that five days got added. So we see all that information about the vacation request, the branch, the employee, all that in one place. So that's kind of just how we can visualize different pieces of related information. So that's where those lookups become extremely important because you can create those kind of related blocks because they're associated through that lookup field. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is actions. And so actions can be configured for a quick views and it can also be configured for detail view. I'll start with quick view. These actions basically are pretty self-explanatory here. When you click on a record, what do you want to have happen? Normally you want to view the details, but for some reason, maybe you want nothing to happen. Maybe you want to duplicate a record. I would highly advise against deleting a record right when you click on it, but some people do like that. Or some people want to jump right into the edit mode whenever they click on a record. So for us, I'm going to leave this as is because I like that detail view that we created. But then for a single record, what I can do is maybe I don't want people to delete things or even duplicate things because I only want them to edit it. So for a single record, you can make it edit only. Also, when you right click a record, I probably also want to remove duplicate and delete. And view record, it's kind of redundant if you click on it versus if you right click on it, you're both going to view the record. It seems repetitive, so I don't need to have that. And if I, for multiple records also, maybe I can get rid of that and leave those two options. Similarly, for detail view, those actions exist for a selected record. There's a couple actions we can add more if we want to. And you can even create a custom workflow action, which we'll cover in a later video about creating these kind of custom buttons to be there. So if I click on access this application now, and here, if I right click on a record, you can see only the edit option is there. If I select a record, only edit and delete is there. The duplicate option went away. If I select multiple records, also doesn't exist there anymore for duplicating. And so it's kind of just restricting some um, errors that people could make. That doesn't mean that I don't have permission to delete records. I'm kind of just hiding the button to delete records. So when we get into a future video on permissions and how users are able to access and view and what actions they can uh, do in the application, we'll get into kind of preventing people from deleting things at a permission security level. But this is just hiding that deletion from this page itself. So it's more just, like I said, hiding the button instead of preventing them from accessing that ability. And so we'll talk about that more in the permissions video later on down in the series. 
But yeah, that's pretty much a very quick primer on working with list reports, coloring them based on some sort of criteria, adding groupings, searching, filtering, sorting, um, visualizing, creating those related blocks. And um, we'll see you in the next video where we talk about calendar reports so we can visualize the vacation request in a calendar, which seems like it would make a lot of sense. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.